Yeah. 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 Hey, how are you, brother? Hey, how are you? 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 Hey, how are I know where I was 16 years ago today. I was in the hospital with my daughter, having my grandson. I, you know, little did I know that that little rascal, you know, that was about that long, was going to be this tall. But that's okay. Praise the Lord for him. He didn't think. get it from his grandpa. No, he did not. See, some of us God made tall and small, and the others. He made short and wide. <laughs> so I, I'm just happy to be one of the short and wide ones, you know. But folks, I want to tell you something. In today's times, we live in a terrible, terrible world that will take and destroy you if you let it. So with that being said, we have to know that there's something better. And that something better is called heaven. Amen. Amen. So you know what, I, I, I let, um, listened to a song this morning that I've heard and I, at 3 o'clock this morning I was frustrated because our video didn't show up last night and guess what, there's a song out by Matthew West right now called Truth Be Told, I love that song because we all put our Halloween costumes on and act like it's okay and we're afraid to tell someone when we're really having trouble where they can pray with us. But we have to go back and remember that God's Word says when we are touching and agreeing, there He is also. And you know what? Sometimes you just need someone to hold you and pray with you <coughs> to get you through the times that you're going through. And so with that being said, I am thankful that I am part of this church. I God gave me a title of pastor. Why, well, I don't know. But I can tell you one thing. He blessed me by doing it. So with that being said, let us bow and let's go to the Lord and then we'll get started this morning. Oh, most gracious Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you for the privilege to be able to come in your house to sing about you and to read your word that you've given us as a warning device from this world. Lord, take this time and Father, let it be our refuge this morning. Let us be refueled. Let us be reconciled and even rebuilt before we go back out into the world. Lord, I thank you for each and every one that's here and what they mean to me. Forgive us, Father, when we find so short. And we ask these things in Christ Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Oh, okay. Don't be a singing to the Lord. We are going to do something today. I want you to get your singing to the Lord but sound. Okay? While y'all are doing that, though, we got something special to do. Okay. We are going to sing Happy Birthday to our 16 year old here, okay? There you go. All right. Happy Birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, God bless you. Happy birthday to you. <laughs> okay, we have one more thing. This month is Pastor Appreciation Month. And so Esleen's going to come up and we have something for Brother. Thank you. Yeah, you have to walk around here. <laughs> 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 well, y'all started the best and saved the worst for last. I, we want to let you know how much you're appreciated, how much we love you, and you always tell us you love us more. But no, you don't. We That's right. right. We love you more. Thank y'all. Yeah. Thank y'all so much for that. You know, I keep telling y'all I am blessed. 
to be a part of y'all. And I'm telling you, I mean that from the bottom of my heart. There's a lot of pastors that does not have the people that I have. We may not have a lot by number, but we have the biggest heart to side to miss it. And I am blessed to be a part of that. And thank y'all so Amen. much. Amen. Okay, turn to 335. And sing it to the Lord. And this is something I want you to think about doing every single day. Turn your eyes upon Jesus. Oh, so are you weary and troubled? No light in the darkness you see. There's light for a look at the Savior, and life more abundant.
child up in the house of God and they get excited when they're there what a blessing that is what a blessing so with that being said you know we we set aside time for our tithes and our offerings and giving back to God but I want to tell y'all watching those two individuals last night we call them kids we call them individuals we call them little people Whatever you all think we need to call them. But I can tell you what, to watch the excitement on your face, it was a blessing. And you know what? That means that parents are doing something right. Grandparents are doing something right. Someone has the right frame of mind to mold those kids into being somebody when they get our age. Do you all realize one day that if Christ doesn't return before then, that those children will be the leaders in our churches one day? Amen. What a blessing. What a blessing. So with that being said, I don't want to take all day because I know Brother James and Brother Rocky is just antsy to get up here and sing our special music <laughs> and, and bless us. I tell y'all what, I, I want to say this. Some of y'all may know the song, but last night Brother Rocky, he's played it before. And he, you know, it, I've heard it many times and other people singing it. It's called the Bible and the belt. And you know what? We should not be afraid to bring out the belt. Or we should not be afraid to bring out the Bible. Amen. Life requires both. Amen. You know what? The Bible says, train up a child in the way they should go. And though they grow old, they will not depart from it. You know what, folks? 
That's the way we need to train our children to be the leaders of tomorrow. So let us bow, please. Our most gracious Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you for loving us as we are. Lord, you require no change. You require nothing of us. But you do require us to believe in you and follow you. And Father, you have given us way more than we deserve with our salvation. Father, you've given us means to have an income coming in and to pay our bills. And so, Lord, you tell us to give back to you because it's a sign of obedience. So, Father, would you take what we give you and use it for kingdom work? Will you be glorified by the things that we give back to you and make sacrifices for? Lord, let us be good stewards with that because you've entrusted us with so much. And Lord, we just ask and pray that you forgive us when we fall short. And we ask these things in Christ Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Brother James and Brother Rocky is going to bring our special this morning <coughs> pardon me and so I'm going to turn them loose now yes sir they going to have to go back to the, the bank and get their savings out <laughs> <laughs>
Amen. You know, folks, it, it amazes me how we take and we're so quick to want to throw things away in today's society. You know, I was watching a deal on Andy Griffin the other day. And this guy had been um, a robber, and Andy wind up shooting him, and he was walking with a limp. <laughs> and he had called and told Andy he was coming to see him. And Andy remembered he shot him. And this gentleman took and when he got to Andy's house, he wanted to give him a present and thank him for bringing him into a different position in life. And I, w I was watching that and I was thinking about today's message and I'm, I'm like, you know, thank the Lord that we have a new opportunity when we come to know him not to have to suffer and pay the price for our wrongdoings. You know, folks, we don't realize how blessed we are by our wrongdoings being washed away. There's a lot of people in this world right now that do not understand what it means to become a new creature. You know, I, I say it this way. You know, if you're in a position to need a heart and you're on the waiting list, you're anxiously waiting for someone else to give up their life and you get their heart where you can have life, where you have a new opportunity. There's kidneys that's failing. There's a, there's a lot of things going on in this world. And you know, I say all that because I want to tell you that it's our choice to become a new creation or not. And I've had people say in the past months around here that I don't want to give up the right to my free choice. But now let me give you an example of what your choice can do to you. And before I do that, I want to tell you, we're coming out of 2 Corinthians today. We're going to be in chapter 5 of 2 Corinthians. But you know, when I say it this way, getting something new, you know, we have opportunity to take, while we're driving our car, and we take it to a mechanic for a checkup. And the mechanic tells us that we need new brakes. And it's going to be $1,200. And, you know, our problem with that is this. Well, I can't afford it right now, so I'm going to choose to keep driving my car with bad brakes. And you don't realize what your choice is doing until you're doing 70 miles an hour and you hit the brakes <laughs> and you have none. That's what your choice will do to you when you take and you're playing around with the Word of God and not letting Him make you a new creation. Folks, we don't understand the opportunity that God has given us through Jesus Christ, His Son, where we can claim to be a new creation. Old things are gone. But you know what today society wants to do? Instead of washing it away or you know making it better, they want to throw it away. You don't believe me? Take a TV nowadays and try to find a TV repair shop. It's disposable. You know what? They treat us like we're disposable too. How do I know that? When you get into the insurances and you need something to make your health better and they refuse to pay for it, guess what? You're, you're at the end of your journey of life with that. So here we go and watch this. We're going to start off in, in 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 13. It says, For whether we be beside ourselves, it is to God. Or whether we be sober, it is for your cause. For 
the love of Christ constraineth us, because we thus judge that if one died for all, then we're all dead. And that he died for all, that they which live should not henceforth live unto themselves, but unto him which died for them and rose again. Wherefore henceforth know we know no we know man after the flesh. Yea, though we have known Christ after the flesh, yet now henceforth know him we no more. Therefore, if any man in, be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become anew. And all things are of God who hath reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ and hath given us to us the ministry of reconciliation. To wit that God was in Christ reconciling the world unto himself not imputing their trespasses unto them, and have committed us to the word of reconciliation. Now then, we are ambassadors for Christ, as though God did beseech you by us. We pray you in Christ's stead, be you reconciled to God. For he hath made him to be sin for us, who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in Him. Let us bow, please. Our most gracious Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank You that, Father, You have given us the opportunity to be reconciled back to You through Jesus Christ. We thank You for His love, His mercy that died for us on the cross of Calvary. But, Father, most of all, that not because of what we've done, but because of what you've done, we have opportunity to be called your children. Forgive us, Lord, when we've fallen so short. And we ask these things in Christ Jesus' name. Amen. 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 You know, folks, I want to say it this way, and I'm entitled today's message. I don't usually put titles on the messages, but what would you do if I told you that when you woke up this morning, you had opportunity to become a new you. That means everything you've ever done in your life can be washed away and forgiven just as if you'd never done it. You know, we have a lot of people in this world right now that does not know Jesus. We have politicians that do not believe the word of Jesus. Amen. We have administrators in our schools that do not believe in the word of Jesus. We have presidents of companies that do not believe in Jesus. Come on. But they will take your money every time you turn around if you'll give it to them. And I'm saying that because I'm, I'm frustrated right now, folks. Come on. Last night, I tried to record our four Saturdays singing. And because of social media being the way it is, they scramble the audio of it. And then you have man-made equipment that's subject to fail at any given time. So our two cameras, neither one worked. But you know what? It's not about what we can do for each other anymore is what can you do for me? Amen. That is the society we live in. Amen. And you know, as I look at this message this morning, and I'm looking, and I begin to think, what's this? For whether we be beside ourselves, it is to God, or whether we be sober, it is for your cause. Do you realize that Jesus Christ hadn't came back today? He granted us privilege to stay here and to be His voice to His great and precious creation that they can come to know Jesus. How many of us are bragging right now that Jesus left us here in this time? Or are we talking saying, Lord, 
You know, it's hard down here. Lord, these, these folks down here don't appreciate nothing. You know what? Watch what we're doing, folks. When the world hears the Christians starting to complain, how in the world can they be attracted to Christ? Because they're saying already, if it's that hard on them, I don't want no part of it because I feel pretty good over here where I am. You know why? They're covering their feelings with things of the world. Drugs, alcohol, pornography, you know, whatever you want to call it. They don't know what it feels like to be new. You know, I, I have people tease me all the time about my truck. You know, my truck's 23 years old. And you know what? I can tell you what, I don't want to replace it with a new one. If you go down and buy a brand new one right now and you're paying six or $700 a month payment, are you guaranteed that it won't break down? No. All you're doing is giving them your money where you can walk around with a new car smell. Yeah. I can tell you, you can go to Walmart and buy a tub of it for $5. You, <laughs> <laughs> you know, we are, we're so busy wanting new stuff that we're not willing to work with the old stuff. And you know what? It, people make fun of my truck. What, would, what do you think they would do if it was a 1957 two-door coupe? Oh, yeah. Fully restored. Uh -huh. that. Yeah, right? <laughs> Oh yeah, I couldn't even keep it in the parking lot. Someone would want it so bad they'd be trying to steal it from me. Come on. Why? Because once you've been rebuilt and reconciled, you have value. Amen. <laughs> Watch what Jesus does with your life when you let Him reconcile Amen. you back to Him. Yeah. Let then you can tell me, hey, I got value. <laughs> Come on. You know why? Because I've been restored. Amen. That, that's, a, that's a hard thing to look at, folks. But when we're just running around like an old clunker with beat up fenders and all, no one sees our value. Come on. But God does. Yeah, he does. God does. Amen. Watch this. You know, here's the problem. If we try to change society right now, everybody wants something new. You look, they want a 4,000 square foot home. They want four or five new cars sitting out in the parking lot where they can work more and pay bills for them because they look good going down the road. It's all about appearance now, folks. Oh, yeah. People are walking around with their Halloween costumes on right now, appearing to be good. Come on. But yet they're still living their old ways, so you know good and well they're having trouble with their reconciliation. Come on. If they have it at all. Preach it. You know, they are happy waking up every morning with the emptiness in them. Because they don't want to give up what they had. People don't like change. No. They will work yourself. Yeah, I, I know y'all, some of y'all are old enough to remember this. You, know, you may even be a day or two older than me. I don't know. There was a Christian song, or not a Christian song, but a country song that said, work your fingers to the bones. Do you realize that in today's society, they're working their fingers to the bone and their heart is set apart and going to hell. Because they don't have time for God. <laughs> Folks, I want to tell you this. Watch what verse 14 says. For the love of Christ constraineth us. Do you know what? How many times do we want to take our Bible and beat the Word of God in someone's head. Come on. <laughs> Been there, done that. I can tell you the only thing keeping me from doing that is God Almighty. Come on. Because I can tell you right now, some people don't see the value of God's Word. 
They're happy working 80 hours a week. They're happy doing all these things. Oh, well, you know, it's Saturday and Sunday. we got to go to the lake. There's no time for God. God ain't done nothing for me anyway. Guess what? God did do something for you. God sent His only begotten Son to die on a cross to shed His blood for you to have choice mm -hmm. whether you choose that way or not. Amen. It's your choice. I can't beat it into you. I can't make you live right. You know what? I I I I gotta say this. If you want to watch a glutton, all you gotta do is take a take them to a buffet. Or as they say in Louisiana, a buffet. <laughs> Let's go to a buffet. <laughs> you know what? I, I'm that way. You think I got this for me by, you know, eating salads? I hate to tell y'all salads don't work. <laughs> you ain't never seen a skinny elephant. No more than you've seen a, a little skinny cow. But, you, you know, stop and think about it. This this is facts right now. They can eat green grass and produce white milk. Yeah, <laughs> it's green. Now guess what? Tell me how the salads work. <laughs> the only thing that works is you having the mindset to know when to push away from the table. Yeah, that's right. Because the Word of God says it's not what goes in you that defiles you. You know what? But it does say don't be a glutton. Yeah. <laughs> if you can live on one sandwich a day, that doesn't mean the sandwich has got to be this big. <laughs> big man. I'm telling you, there is a reason that this world is not having a desire to be reconciled back to God. You know why? We don't know how to act no more. We don't know how to respond to them anymore. Because I'll promise you, we have so much wickedness in us that we they can't see Jesus no more in us. Come on. You know, folks, you can go to a car show. And I'm going back to the old cars now. You can go to a car show where they didn't care. They just put a coat of paint on something and put an engine in it, and it runs. Or you can go to a car that's been took apart. Every bolt, every nut has been taken time to be polished and cleaned. And that car is better than it was new. I'm going to tell you right now. Your body is that car. Because we try to do patch jobs. We try to do bondo work. We try to pour a little coat of paint on it. That we hired a painter that's never painted before in his life. And from a distance we look good. But when people begin to spend time with us, we look bad. You know why? They can see all our flaws. Oh, I know you're whispering to your neighbor right now, I ain't got no flaws. <laughs> okay. I, I, I'm going to trust you. You know why? Y'all heard me say I can't, I can't hit a fool over the head with the Word of God and beat it into him, right? If you're not going to admit your flaws to God Almighty, you cannot repent of them. You cannot be reconciled. You cannot be washed. Amen. We put them all in our purse and walk around. <laughs> oh, don't, 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 don't even get me going on purses right now. <laughs> Used to, a woman could take a purse this big and they could shove all their belongings in it. You know how I know they can do that? Look, I got it. 
You got makeup in there? <laughs> <laughs> Only blush, brother. <laughs> but you know what? We have the problem of taking, and now we got a bag that you can't even put in the front seat with you because it covers a whole width of the car. That's what we're doing in our lives. We're toting our junk around. Amen. Amen. You know, oh, well, Pastor, you don't understand. You're not a woman. We got to talk this and that. Oh, really? If you need it that bad to leave the house for 20 minutes, why do you think they put a bag limit on airlines? You ever seen a plane take off? Why do you think it's like that? All the bags are in the back end of the plane. Because someone's going on a two-day trip and they got 17 bags. <laughs> Folks, I'm just telling you reality. If the world cannot tell the difference between the Christians and the non-believers, how in the world can they be reconciled? Mm -hmm. How can they be made new? Amen. Well, it says right here, let's just read on a little bit and see what the Word of God says. Verse 15, you ask someone the gospel message of truth and they can't tell you what truth is. You want me to be honest right now? You know why I don't know? They know what they know not what truth is. The word of God says thou shall not kill. I was doing a devotion this week since 1973 when they started abortion that 500 million babies have been killed. Do y'all realize there's a governor right now in one of these states that is trying to take and giving moms the opportunity to know if they did the right thing or not? Up to seven weeks old after birth they can kill that child. Mm. That's murder. If God blew the breath of life in that child while that child is in you, that baby's alive. And for those of you that never done it before and never experienced it before, have you? I, I went through a woman being pregnant. You know what? After they get a certain point, they eat like they're eating for two years. You know why? They are. they are. Their their bodies having to feed that child without them giving that food to that child, that nourishment, that child, that child's gonna not develop. That's right. Some people call it an umbilical cord. I call it a lifeline. Come on. Yeah. That baby's alive. Now, watch this. We have to know that Jesus died for all. Guess what? That means everybody out there that called you names yesterday. Jesus died for them. That means everybody today that will bring you a hamburger that ain't cooked all the way at the buffet. <laughs> Guess what? What's the first thing we're at, we want to do to them? Because they didn't give it to us our way, we want to scream and holler at them? Yeah. Or better yet, I had this experience this morning. How many of y'all ate a donut or a kolache or something this morning? Mm -hmm. I'm standing in line at the donut shop. A young lady got there before me. There was another lady at the front of the line. There was a four or five people in there, I don't remember. And this young lady all of a sudden went to screaming and pitching a hissy fit. Well, if y'all not going to wait on me, I'm leaving. <laughs> and you know what? She did. Mm -hmm. You know, when there's one person on the other side of the counter and there's one person in front of you, you got to wait until they're served. That's just facts a lot. Mm -hmm. You know what? But I'm sitting there thinking, Lord, why in the world would this young lady do that? 
and I begin to understand something. She did not have the love of Christ in her. It's a me society, folks. It's all about what we can get out of it and not what we can give to it. I'm moving on. I, I'm telling you, I've got about 10 minutes. I, I'll, I'll chase a rabbit this morning if I'm not careful. It says, Wherefore henceforth know we no, no, we no man after the flesh. Yea, though we have known Christ after the flesh, yet now henceforth know we him no more. You know what, folks? This is a sad verse right here. It breaks my heart. You know why? If we take it in literal terms and look at it, what it's talking about here, I got mine. Get yours the way you can. We're no longer serving people. We're all about what we can get out of it. You know, I, I heard a pastor the other day. Well, I ain't calling him a pastor. A speaker on TV the other day. And, oh man, he, he, had, he had the gift of gab. And you know what? He finished his sermon with this. Well, all you got to do is send me $10,000 and I'll pray for you and you do not have to worry about the gates of hell. <laughs> Hold on. How in the world can me giving a man $10,000 stop me from going to hell? Guess what? It's like COVID-19. I'm putting my faith in a piece of cloth and not in the hem of the garment of Jesus Christ. Come on. I'm putting my faith in that man to save me for $10,000. I started to, to have some fun. Monopolies don't have that much money in them. <laughs> I would have put $10,000 of Monopoly money in an envelope and said, will this help? <laughs> because I'm telling you folks, we're putting our faith in the wrong things right now. We're letting the world convince us that we no longer have to put our faith in God. We have to put our faith in man. <laughs> Well, I think the Word of God says don't put your trust in man because man will forsake you. Mm -hmm. That's right. Every time. That's right. <laughs> I know none of y'all's ever been where I've been where a boss has disappointed you. Or a family member has disappointed you. Or a kid has made a wrong choice as a parent and disappointed you. Guess what? Jesus don't get disappointed. He says, I love you. And all you got to do is ask for forgiveness and I'll give it to you. You want to know something? Praise God he don't look at our wrongdoings. That's right. He don't remember them. But the devil reminds you of them. <laughs> Real quick. It's called suitcases. I mean, a uh, purse now. Remember that. They're toting everything they own in there. I seen a purse yesterday and I, I'm, I'm like, really? How in the world would you even tote it? That purse had to be three foot wide. And the woman was sitting there hollering, my shoulder hurts. But I guess so. You probably got a bathtub in that thing. I know, folks. Y'all think I'm picking on women today. Guess what? Man can't even keep their stuff in a wallet no more. Man. They got a fanny pack as wide as their body and say, oh, let me see what I got in here. Take them three days to go through it. Don't worry, they can't help you out with nothing. You know, folks, when I say it this way, I love to put a little laughter with God's Word. I love for us to understand 
This is facts. Come on. This is reality. If we are not a new creation in Jesus Christ because of His blood, because of our belief, how in the world can we expect to go to heaven to be with Him? That's right. You can't continue to talk what you had in your past and expect to get to something better. You know, if all you like is drinking drugs, alcohol, and I, I'm going to watch myself now, and fornication, we'll just call it that. And you say, well, I'm okay. I like what I'm doing. Guess what? When you get to the pearly gates, and Jesus says, well, guess what? Continue doing what you like to do. But you're not coming in. You're not coming in. You know, folks, without being reconciled to God Almighty through Jesus Christ because of His blood and because of our beliefs, we can't become a new creation. Because we keep choosing not to get the brakes fixed on our car. Because we don't want to put out that money. We don't want the change coming in us that would take us out of our old habits. I'm fixing to say something. You, you know, if you really want to watch something clean, ask your husband to do dishes tonight. Some of you are already saying, well, I don't know, I don't want to do dishes. You know what? How many of y'all go to a restaurant and look at the silverware? Oh, that's dirty. I ain't eating with that. But we expect Jesus to take the filthy and to let us in. I'm telling y'all. We got the wrong attitude. Watch it. I'm, I'm, I'm coming in with the closing here. Watch verse 17. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things become new. Guess what? I'm a Christian. I don't act like I used to act. Amen. I don't talk like I used to act. Amen. I don't walk the way I used to walk. You know why? <clears throat> Someone's watching me. Amen. And they're saying, you know what? If he can do it, I can do it. Do you realize that once you accept Jesus as your personal Savior, you have a higher accountability to the world than you did before them? If all things become new, your old man's back there. Okay. Guess what? The new man don't act like he used to. That's right. Don't talk like he used to. That's right. Praise God. You know what? Because he's been washed clean with the blood of Jesus. Amen. You know, some of y'all are country folk. Y'all understand this one. You can go out and grab a pig. Pull him out of the mud hole. Tie him to a tree. And scrub that pig up. And you can put <clears throat> fancy bows and perfume on that pig. And all you got to do is walk off for a few minutes. And that pig's tied to the tree and ain't no one paying him attention. He's going to go back to being a pig. Yeah. That's all he knows to do. <laughs> and you know what? In society, that's all they know to do. That's right. You can make an old wore out clunker look like a decent car. But when you put the key in it, and it goes, and it won't run, 
Books aren't everything, folks. You know what? Some of us are just like that old car. We take, we transform the outside, walking around like we're all that in a box of rocks. I'm a pig. I look good. I smell good. But you better not let me loose this tree. <laughs> I'm going back to the mud hole. And I'm a water in. <clears throat> you know why? I'm just a pig. That's all I know. And you know what? If you put a whole bunch of pigs together, they don't know how to keep one another out of the mud. Back in the day, they'll lead them right to it. Hey, I seen a watering hole over here. Oh, man, it's good. You don't believe me that one? I'll take it. Well, you can't do it right now. But you go buy a bar and see if it ain't full on a Saturday night. And our churches are empty. Come on. Mm -hmm. Folks, it's because we no longer are walking like we're changed. It's no, we're no longer even telling Jesus, thank you for loving us enough to send His only begotten Son. We think we deserve it. And you know what? I've said it before and I'll say it again. The world thinks they deserve the best treatment there is. Because they know no better. You know what? I love that song where it says, Lord, though my will be humble, make it crumble. Take me completely out of the picture, Lord. I don't want people to see me. Amen. I want them to see you. Amen. You know, if they look at me long enough, they'll find a fault with me. But if they look at Jesus Christ, they're not going to find a fault. They will see a man that died on the cross to come back in three days and be a Savior. The Son of God. That, what did I read a while ago? That knew no sin, but yet became sin. He 